Hello everyone. So today we are going to, to begin our discussion on the link layer. So far we have discussed the application layer, the transport layer and the network layer and today we are going into the to discuss the link layer. So first what are the what are the goals of this chapter? We're going to understand the principles behind the different link layer services. Then we are going to talk about error detection and correction. We are also going to look at as multiple as how multiple routers and hosts in the network share a broadcast channel that is known as multiple access and then we were going to look into link layer addressing. Link layer addressing is a little different, is slightly different from the network layer addressing or the IP packets and we'll look into that. So first in this uh, introduction we'll just cover the, what are the different services by uh, given by the link layer and talk about error detection and correction. But first let's look at some terminology. For the purpose of the link layer we would consider that all hosts and uh, routers in the network are known as nodes. Now the communication channel between two hosts in the between two hosts or or between a host and a router basically between two nodes in the network is called a link. Now the link can either be wired or can be wireless. So this link here between the two routers is actually a wired link. Similarly the link between this mobile phone and the cell phone tower here is a, is a wireless link. The laptop is also communicating with this access point using a wireless link. So links can be both wired and wireless. Now the layer to packet, the terminology for that is called a frame and what it does is it encapsulates a, <coughs> a layer 3 packet or an IP packet or a datagram to be more precise. So if I want to give you a one line definition of what the link layer does, the link layer's responsibility is to, is to transfer datagram from one node to the physically adjacent node over the link. So for example here these two routers are connected by a wired link and the responsibility of the data link layer is to transfer data uh, from this node out here to this node here. So that is the function of the link layer. Now there are different kinds of protocols that, <laughs> that operate over the link layer and there are many versions of it. The two most famous ones are Ethernet, when, which is used in a wired network, where you have, and that's basically this technology that's used when you connect an, uh, an Ethernet, <coughs> your computer via an Ethernet cable. Or the other one is of the Wi-Fi network, or it's also known as 82.11. So it's a wireless link layer protocol. Now, there are multiple link layer protocols and different, and they might provide different, different kinds of services. And we will look into the kinds of services provided by the link layer next. But, but before we move on, I'll like to give you a transportation analogy so that you have a better understanding of the link layer. So say you are planning this trip to go from Princeton to Lausanne. Now, we've looked at <coughs> the one way to go about is, is you could take a limousine to go from Princeton to JFK. From JFK, you could take a, uh, a plane to go to Geneva. And then you could take a train to go from Geneva to Lausanne. Now, this, these are the three links of, the, of your trip. So the first link is to reach pre, uh, JFK from Princeton, and then you have to fly from Princeton, uh, from JFK to Geneva, and then from Geneva, you're going to Lausanne. Now, and the tourist is you, and, in, and we could think about the tourist as a datagram. Now, each of these legs are, <coughs> is actually a communication link, and the transportation mode can be thought about as a link layer protocol. So the limousine is one kind of uh, link layer protocol, is the plane uh, is another kind of link layer protocol, and the train is another kind of link layer protocol. But they might they provide diff they can provide different kinds of services, but overall the goal is to get you from from the from point A to point B. So the goal of the link layer, a goal of the link layer protocol is to transfer data between the two nodes communicated by a link. So I hope this tra transportation analogy, analogy gives you a better understanding of the link layer. Now, what are the different kinds of services that the link layer provides? This is an abstract level of the services that it provides. One, it's, it provides framing, that it takes the datagram from the network layer and encapsulates in a frame and and it does so by adding some headers and trailers the next is it uses mac addresses 
uh, to do the addressing and that it puts in the headers as well. Just remember that the MAC address is different from the IP address and it provides a, and it's used for a different purpose. So I just want to bring this point now and we will get into MAC addresses in greater detail later. The other thing is you, you want a, a good link layer, by, by good I mean it in quotes, you want it to be, to be able to transfer data reliably between adjacent nodes. Now, we looked at a reliable data transfer protocol in context of, of the transport layer where we looked at TCP. But we don't need something as complex as TCP for the link layer. It is, it is much more easier to provide reliable data transfer in the link layer, especially if you are using a wired link. However, if you're using a wireless link, the, the data rates, uh, the errors can be much higher. So that is one more service that the link layer provides. And how this reliable data transfer takes place and how framing and uh, link access also takes place, we'll look at this in a little more detail later. But I'm, for now, I'm just giving you a high level abstract view about the services provided by the link layer. The link layer I would like to mention also gives flow control. It does error detection and error correction in some cases, and it's both half duplex and full duplex. So these are the different services provided by the link layer. We will begin by talking about error detection and correction for, <coughs> in this lecture. So before we talk about error detection and correction, which is it's going to be the, at the later part of this lecture, I want to quickly talk about where the link layer is implemented. So far, we have talked about we have talked about the application layer, the transport layer, and the network layer. All the uh, the transport, the application transport and network layer are all implemented in software. The link layer is implemented partly in software and partly in hardware. So. Uh, this is the this is the first uh, connection the link layer the first connection between hardware and software and it's implemented in the NIC or the network interface card so this figure here will would give you on your on your uh, this figure here will give you a better understanding of where the link layer is implemented now the other thing is I want to give you a, a brief overview of how two adapters or two hosts uh, connected by a link communicate. So what, I'm sorry. So what happens is the datagram, which comes from the network layer, is encapsulated in a frame at the sending side. And at the sending side, what the host does, it it adds error checking and a flow, some flow control bits. That is what is called a frame. It then put on the link. The link carries it, and the receiver and and the receiver then receives this uh, frame. When the receiver receives the frame, it looks for errors, and then and if there are no errors in the message, it extracts the datagram, and then it passes it on to the network layer. Okay, so this is how the link layer actually works. So we'll end this lecture, as I was mentioning, with some brief uh, discussion about error detection and correction. Now, what is, <coughs> how does error detection work? So let's consider this simple <coughs> diagram here. So first there is, this is, this portion here is the sending side, and this is the receiving side. Now what the sender does is, it takes a datagram from the network layer, and let's assume that the datagram is d bits, it adds something called EDC, which is the error detection and correction bits. Those are added for redundancy. So if you don't have additional bits, there's no way for you to detect error. Now, what I want to say even before I get into error detection and correction is error detection is not 100% reliable. And we'll look at an example of this. So first, the datagram is consists of these D bits and there is this error detection and correction bits. And what it's done is, once these error detection and correction bits are added to the D bits, the, the sender puts this packet onto the link, on the physical link. And the physical link is prone to an error, prone to error. And you could think of the physical link as this wireless link, which is, which can uh, have, introduce a lot of errors. So what happens is when the receiver receives the frame, 
both the the D capital D bits could be uh, uh, could be modified, or this error detection and correction bits could be modified. That's why we have D prime and E prime here. But we are not bothered about the error detection and correction bits that much. What we want, or what the receiver wants in this case, is to check if D prime is okay. And when I say that D prime is okay, what it means is can is d prime the same as d if d prime is same as d what it will do is it will transfer this datagram to the network layer otherwise it would say that an error has been detected so this is the basic principle through which error detection occurs now let's look at a, a concrete example of error detection so here we look at single bit parity in a single bit uh, parity case what happens is there are each bit as you know can either take 0 or 1 and when this d bits a parity bit is added so what happens here is there are as you can see there are odd number of ones here there are odd number of ones here there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 ones here and and the parity bit has been set to 0 so the parity bit has been set to zero, which says that the number of bits, data bit, number of ones in the data bits is odd. So say when the receiver receives the data bits and the number of one of say one, this the fourth, the, the second zero here, this one here, is flipped to one. What would happen is the number of data bits will have an even number of ones. But the parity bit is zero. When a parity bit is zero, it means that the number of ones that are there are should be odd. But as you can see that if this single zero is now flipped due to uh, an error in the channel, then the number of bits in the D bits is going to be even. In that way, the receiver can detect that there is an error. But as I said, that error detection and correction are not 100%. Say the, the second zero and the third zero both got flipped with a one. This is this zero out here and this zero both got flipped with a one. Then the number of ones would now change from nine to 11. So they are going to increase. But they still, the number of uh, ones is going to remain odd. With what this is going to, to result is that, the, and, and, if, and the parity bit is set to zero. What this would mean is that you would not be able to detect any any errors here. What <clears throat> the receiver would say that it has received this bit correctly. So say uh, uh, with a single bit parity, you can only detect single bit errors. So that is, it's only capable of detecting single bit errors. Further, with a single bit parity, you can only detect errors. There's no way for you to correct any kind of errors. And that should be obvious with this example. A simple way to correct errors is to use two-dimensional parity check. So here, what, ha what happens is you have parity along, so all the, the numbers are arranged in the form of a matrix here. And so say the 15 bits are arranged in the form of a matrix. So it's a, it's a five, uh, it's a three cross five matrix. So there are three rows and five columns. Now, there is a parity bit for each of these um, bits here, so for each of these rows here. What happens is, if there is an error, say, and what I mean by that is, say this bit here got flipped with a zero. What, would, what you can find out with a single bit parity is this, uh, one of these bits here, have been flipped. So this has this entire row has not been received correctly. That, that is the de detection part that you can do with single bit parity. Again, if you look along the column, what you can see that there is again, uh, using single bit parity, you can see that there is some error across it, along this column. Now, the intersection of the row of the column and this row is going to give you where the error precisely occurs. So using two-dimensional parity, you can not only detect single bit errors, what you can do is you can also correct single bit errors. Now, as we, now in this case, you've detected that the error is here, 
what just and as a bit can only take two values zero and one you know that the actual value that was transmitted is one and not zero so using two-dimensional parity you can co correct for single bit errors as well okay with that we would <coughs> end our discussion today and in the next lecture what i'm what we will do is we'll talk about media multiple access protocols thank you